Awakening Lines is what this hour will also be about. Kate Mason has an extensive background in welfare and community development. She has spent the last three years getting up to speed with the global narratives which are shepherding us into a dystopian world of surveillance. Goodness me, we're humans, the environment, where we live, what we eat, our genetic code, etc., are all being raised to the ground so we can build back better. You've heard that term, haven't you? Kate endeavours to get as much of the bigger picture as possible. And as she follows different global narratives, is increasingly aware that they are all colliding into a powerful net of vested interests and monitored people, leading to massive wealth transfers, all being orchestrated through our government. Kate is a member of Community Voice Australia, which advocates for government and public-private partnership transparency, and that people have a genuine voice in matters affecting them and their environment. Kate Mason, welcome to Weekends. Thank you, Jason. Lovely to see you. Well, you too. Thanks for coming on the show today. We have got a lot to get through. Um, and uh, I don't want it to just be a, an information download because it's the nuance and the detail that you are so good at mastering. So we might slow down on certain points and embellish there and get to explain to our viewers and listeners where it is that they may be able to find they can get some form of advantage by getting involved in a constructive may in a constructive way represented by facts figures real arguments real evidence that therefore is something that they can make a significant contribution and turn this big globalist ship around maybe even sink it where should we start should we go to climate change and just sort of get an update of how this this whole story, this agenda is now turning into an octopus going off into different directions? Yeah, that's a good place to start. Um, and this just came, uh, what I'm going to discuss or start discussing today. So I was on the World Economic Forum website uh, five days ago and saw uh, an article they put up last or in 2022 about how climate change is causing an insurance crisis in Australia. Um, I did then see that the ABC and different, you know, different articles in the ABC did cover it at the time, but I haven't seen much or I don't think many people are aware of the narratives that are being crafted around climate change and their actual homes and private um, private home ownership, as well as being able to rent. Um, so I wanted to start there and yes. then go into different things that I'm involved with at the moment with farmers and et cetera. So just to go from there. Yeah, so, please, please yeah. do just to just to clarify that for for our viewers and listeners, insurance is is a, is a kind of a, a secret thing here. It's something that we don't really take into consideration. Many people think that maybe if I fix the interest on my uh, on my mortgage, then I know I've got certainty in terms of what I need to pay out to to keep you know the wolves at bay and no one to repossess my home. For a tenant, they might sign a twelve month or a two year lease or something like that. But insurance costs, compulsory insurance on your home, for example, uh, that you have to have because the mortgage uh, the bank requires it, uh, have been escalating at, at a rate of knots. I know our insurance is unbelievably expensive now. And I wonder if it gets to a certain point that people will be forced to sell. Is that the direction that we're headed here? That's the direction. Um, so there was a report put out by the Climate Council, which is an Australian body called Uninsurable Nation, Australia's Most Climate Vulnerable Places. So they're saying one in 25 homes in Australia will be uninsurable by 2030. So there's nothing nuanced about that. Mm. Um, so when you go to their report, and I, I would encourage, so what I really want to encourage is that as the Australian people actually look at this because you're going to have to get involved in this. The, otherwise, you're going to lose your homes or a, a big chunk of people will incrementally. So they've pulled out the Australia's most climate vulnerable places, which um, include uh, Brisbane, Moncrief, I don't know how to say that in Queensland, Richmond and New South Wales, these are the electorates, the local the local council areas, Page, yes. Indy, Nichols, Hindmarsh, Morant, Morant, Morano and Wright. So quite a number in Queensland. Um, but they have a map. So you can go to their map. And if you just search for climate council, climate risk map, you can put your postcode in there and you can see how you how your area, your actual town has been assessed for um, high risk climate change scenarios. So, you know, there's a lot of a lot of the country in Australia is assessed as high risk and medium risk. And so high risk is when, I'm just going to just go down to see what they're saying. So high risk homes have an annual, so they forecast that you have an annual damage cost from climate change 
and extreme weather equivalent to 1% or more of the property's replacement costs. And these properties are effectively uninsurable. Now, if you're assessed as a medium risk, you have damage costs annually equivalent to 0.2 to 1% of the property replacement cost. And so that you're also going to get in trouble in that medium risk area. So they're looking at riverine flooding, coastal inundation, extreme wind, bushfires and surface water flooding. And what they do is they, um, so even if you're at low risk for flooding and low risk for fire, they would combine that. So those low risks might then still make you come into the medium risk um, threshold. Yes. So then you have the issues coming up there. So I would suggest that everyone goes on and has a look because this is something people are going to have to get involved in. Um, they're high emissions projections, so they're going from a high emissions projection, which is that um, there will be a 4.4 degrees Celsius rise in temperatures by 20, uh, 2100, and that comes from the IPCC 2021 climate report. And there's a lot of scientists around the world who are refuting that that number. Um, one, what is their solution? And this is just one of six. Support communities to build back better. So towns, cities and communities must be rebuilt in a way that takes into account the inevitable future changes in climate and makes them more resilient. And this may mean in some areas not rebuilding at all but managed relocations must be discussed. So we're fine. Uh, there's a lot of documents uh, just looking in the last few days where managed retreat is very much on the agenda where they manage you out of your home and your community. Hey, can um, I just can I just get you to pause just on that term managed retreat? Many people wouldn't be aware, but this is an official term that's now being used by government bodies uh, around the country and perhaps around the world now. So what you're saying when you say managed retreat is that this climate alarmism with these um, artificially created numbers here, when you talk about medium risk damage, um, high risk damage, the idea that your house um, it might be worth a million dollars to replace if it were burnt to the ground by insurance. But if 1% of that is spent per annum to fix it based on these climate disasters, which is only $10,000, which is probably not much more than a coat of paint uh, and, and perhaps a, a timber repair, uh, it's not very much money, but that's what they're deeming to be uninsurable. It, it's extraordinary. But then the managed retreat is the process whereby they collectively decide here that this is an area that's got too many $10,000 repairs going on. So we're going to have to move you all out into another area. And and, and I'm assuming, and I'm not trying to jump ahead of the, the narrative here, but uh, that this is where the smart city concept, because they're going to come back and build back better. This is kind of the direction it's heading. Is that right? That's what I'm thinking. It, this Reading that report put a lot of dots together for me because I've been looking at smart cities for the last year that, you know, which is considered resilient, resilient buildings and, resi you know, the stack and pack and have basically, um, you know, have a massive component of what they mean by resilient is that having everything being analysed um, and, and data created on you and data collected on everything you do within your home and how the house functions. So, yes, I'm seeing that. And that's why I'm seeing these massive building developments in currently in progress. That would make sense that if one in 25 homes in Australia is going to be uninsurable, that we're going to be, because also then when you go to sell that house, you're not going to be able to sell it for very much. Yes. Who's right. going to buy an uninsurable house? So you're then selling it for chips to, I don't know who to, but it'll be to some, some great advantage of a globalist agenda. Um, and, and yeah, so then where are you going to go? And and then you also have the combined thing where they, you know, they're very clearly stating that many, many people's jobs are going to be replaced by AI in the not in the very close future. And then they talk about us being able to have a universal basic income where we we, you know, like they talk about it like this fantastic thing, you're replaced by machines and you're replaced by AI and robotics. But you can sell your data and 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 teach these machines how to do it better and you'll get a universal basic income, which of course will be linked to what sort of citizen, what sort of digital citizen you are, um, and and whether or not you abide by certain agendas and say certain things. And if you challenge anything, you will be locked out, is how I'm seeing it. 
Well, it's it's very hard to refute it because the pattern's already there. We we saw it during the pandemic that uh, one step short of compulsory medicine, but we were basically uh, pushed into that situation that if you didn't comply, you were excluded. And politicians around the world openly um, were happy to exclude. Who can forget Gladys Berejiklian, the Premier of New South Wales, saying, "Oh, I don't want to be in a with an unvaccinated person." I mean, how do you how do you say that if you'd substituted the term unvaccinated for any other term to describe a human being? It is automatic discrimination, except in this case. Now, um, I, I just a couple of terms here. In, in the idea of one, sorry, one in 25 homes being uninsurable and therefore uninhabitable, uh, you can't sell it. It's basically a write-off. This is part of this situation. If it's not given to a globalist agenda to develop in some direction, it's part of this whole idea of rewilding, um, the idea that they want to bring people into cities and then just make these natural national parks, etc. They definitely want to stack and packed in smart cities and away from nature. They are definitely creating the narrative that we are uh, intrinsically bad for nature and they have you know technology where they're trying to convince people through PR spins that nature's good for you so you can um, access it through your headset in virtual reality and you know this sort of this sort of narrative which is incredibly disturbing and they also are very very hell-bent on transforming the genetic code of food um, in, in, in food and people through CRISPRing to, to yeah, that we're, we're all are fundamentally dangerous to the climate. In the meantime, okay. oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, just on that, I want you to clarify for me the point, the term CRISPR that I heard you say there for people that may be unaware. It's kind of this 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 genetic manipulation yet again. Is is that how I understand it? Yeah, it's a it's a way of cutting the gene. So they call it a genetic scissor, genetic scissors. So you can cut the gene, you can insert something in to create a new genetic code, or you can cut a little. So they they sell it like they could cut um genetic ir irregularities in people so they can cut it out so you no longer have that propensity to get a disease or you know or whatever else so it implies that everyone's dna code needs to be um you know collected and then you hear about uh, i was watching listening to a baya monsanto talk and you know i can't remember the name of the guy but he was talking about how um well, this is slightly different, but implantable tech inside your body that picks up on any virus you get and sends out an alert, and that's definitely coming, and, and it is. If you read the documents, they, they talk about this all the time. And also that you can we, they can engineer us so that we'll never get a cold. Oh, sure. Um, uh, based on their success rate so far, do you believe them? Um, no, but I, I think they'll try. Yeah. I think oh. everything that's coming in is going to be very, very damaging to the human body and the environment. It's um, it beggars belief, and I know this is a very disturbing topic for uh, our viewers and listeners. Uh, but I appreciate that uh, that you want the best quality, latest information that's out there, uh, and that's why we're talking about it. But the best part about the work that Kate does that she always works towards a solution, and yes, it does involve activism in the term of getting involved. And of course, there will be always a point where everyone will say that is enough for me. I'm getting up. I'm going out. I'm doing something, whether it's attending a rally, writing a letter actively getting involved. I just wanted to mention just a couple of other papers that are out because it's not just one okay. climate climate um, group that are saying this. There's the Actuaries, A-C-T-U-A-R-I-E-S Institute, and mm -hmm. they put out a green paper and they've been quoted in the ABC. So that was in 2022. They talk about um, managed retreat being necessary. Um, and then up, and then there's also going to be because your your house is going to be up have to be upgraded with whatever they bring in around the building code. So of course for new buildings they'll have to be upgraded, so they're going to become a lot more expensive. But also in your existing home you're going to have to upgrade um, to make it climate resilient and whatever that means. And I and so I haven't got to that yet, but they also have a disclaimer at the end where they just say our models are uncertain. Our par parameters are uncertain. Our process is uncertain. We cannot, you know, our data is uncertain. So they have this little disclaimer, but everything is going ahead based on this data and these models. So this is, I guess, what I, I need people, I want people to take action because I'm only just looking at it in the last few days, but it's absolutely something people need to take, you know, like take responsibility for this to find out what modelling, what climate change modelling are they relying on to make these judgment calls on people's properties and start to fight it from that that um, place. So that has been happening in New Zealand because I think New Zealand must have had this all coming in 
prior. Um, I just also want to say the New South Wales government has partnered with a group called XDI and they have a, they're part of a climate risk group and there you can see they're talking about how climate change could impact your property and they're talking about costly repairs, rising premiums and market devaluation. So this is all here. It's all here ready to go. Um, there's a group in New Zealand who've been fighting this. They're, I think it's, I can't remember the exact area they're in, but they're called the Coastal Rate Payers United and you can, they've got a website. So they looked at the modelling. So I th my understanding is their area was seen at, you know, huge risk of climate change and rising oceans. And they, the mo and so they went. And so then infrastructure was not being replaced in their area and houses were becoming uninsurable. So they're a little bit ahead of us. So they they got together and they actually funded um, independent research and they've got a lot they say the climate change modeling that was relied upon by the local council is completely flawed so i would suggest that we need to see what they've done see what sort of modeling they're saying is flawed and what they've found out and then move on from there and become um you know become active around this space because if we sit back and allow it and don't challenge it it's going to go ahead yeah, that that's the point, isn't it? And 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 regardless of what you uh, think about climate change, and you too may believe, like many of us do, that the uh, the modelling is flawed and the argument isn't quite there. There's certainly enough uh, scientists out there refuting this uh, narrative. But this is a juggernaut of uh, of opinion, effectively, where the people that hold the power around the world, the globalists, for want of a better term, are insistent that this is the way that they want to run the world. It doesn't mean that it's going to get there, but we are certainly on the field now and it's game time. And that's the point of the uh, the exercise that we're doing. And Kate, you're out there, I guess you're you're playing um, a, a captain of the defence uh, in many ways. Uh, if if we liken the, the metaphor to this, is it's game time, right? It's definitely game time. It's definitely people get engaged 